Harvesting rainwater or rainwater capture has been around for centuries. The first pioneers that came to this country depended on rainwater and cisterns to help them establish homes all across this land. And today there's many nations in the world that are very dependent upon rainwater as their sole source of water that they have to drink. Here there's lots of renewed interest in rainwater for a number of different reasons. One of those is the additives that we have and what it takes to make our water safe to drink. As our population grows, are we going to have enough water to supply the water needs for this next generation and generations to come? Then as we become more conservation minded, it's a way that we can reduce our water bill. And at the same time, we can capture this water and use it on our landscapes, or in this case, I use it for my home. So rainwater has a number of different options, a number of different ways that we can collect it and use it, whether for our livestock, for our wildlife, for our plants, or for our homes. So water is very valuable to us, and as we can look at rainwater as an option to a very critical situation that we have. A good way to start out in collecting rainwater is with rain barrels, and there are a number of them available in different sizes and different price ranges. However, I want to show you one today that we're going to make out of just an old trash can. And this is one that we've just taken the lid off it, we're going to change it, we're going to insert a faucet through it, uh, and then I'll show you the parts that we're going to use. Well, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and have an overflow where you can go ahead and cut a two-inch hole, uh, insert a two-inch PVC pipe, and this here we put a screen on the bottom to keep the mosquitoes out, and we can just go ahead and attach that to the side. We also want to connect the faucet here at the bottom uh, using an old washer and just using a nut and tighten that real tight so that it doesn't leak. And then we, when we are going ahead and connecting it to our house, if we have an existing downspout, we can go ahead and cut the center out of this lid and insert it and then take the PVC pipe from our gutter and then divert it into this tank. The good thing about it is that it is light tight so I don't have to worry about algae or mosquitoes being a problem in here. However, if we're not able to connect it to a downspout, if you don't have the gutters, then you can go ahead and take this lid and you can cut the center out of it and then we can replace it and put a screen and that way there's mosquitoes and other trash can't get into that tank from the outside and then just place it under the eave of the house so that the water will come through the center and then we can use this water just catching it with a bucket from here and go into water our plants or the things that we want to use or we can connect it to a water hose and go to a specific place or like in this case we have it connected to a, a, a small dog water or pet water so we can have a float on the inside of it so we can water our dog or cat or for our wildlife. But each one of these as a rain barrel is a good way to start out in collecting water and conserving that water and getting you very conservation minded. Rainwater has lots of different benefits that we can use the water and use it for lots of different purposes but also collecting that rainwater has a way of also alleviating some problems and that's what we have here in this facility. This is a livestock show barn that our kids are using and we've continually added on to those facilities increasing the amount of impervious area that we have here. And in doing that we increase the amount of water that runs off or the amount of storm water increases and in this site we have a very low site and so all that water just stands here creating a problem for our, our people as they try to park as they try to move here. So to alleviate that problem, we've included a rainwater capture system and a collection tank. So we're using that water, catching it off of this building, diverting it into that tank, and then we're using that water not only to irrigate the facilities around here in our landscape, but also to provide water for our livestock and be able to wash them whenever we have our livestock show. At this facility, we have a unique situation. The problem is that the roof of our building is the same height as the top of our collection tank. And so the water needs some way to move downhill by gravity, and we don't have that situation here. So what we've done is from our gutters, we have a conversion that goes to a four inch PVC pipe. And then from there, the water is being moved on down through our pipe down underground. So it's out under the way of all of our kids and everyone at this facility. Then the tank that's underground, we have an overflow that's connected to that same four inch pipe uh, that diverts this water out as this tank gets full if we have too heavy a rain event. In this tank, as the water moves in, we have a third horsepower sump pump that as the water level rises up, that the float comes on and as it kicks on the pump and there it pumps the water into our 10,000 gallon collection tank. This is a 10,000 gallon uh, corrugated steel collection tank that has a vinyl liner on the inside. 
Also has a sand floor on this rather than a concrete or wooden floor on it. The sand is held in place by rocks that we have as well as the cross ties. Once this tank is full, then this is our overflow that's on the back side that allows the water then to move away from our building. During the summer months, much of our water goes to our landscape. In some cities, as much as 50% of that annual water used is in our landscape. And so if we can reduce the amount of water by capturing that water and collecting it in a storage tank as we're doing in this facility, then we can reduce the amount of water that we use uh, in our landscape and reduce the total amount of water that we're dependent on a municipal water supply. Here in this facility, we're using gravity flow or just a gravity pressure to push that water through this one half inch poly pipe that we have all connected through here. And then from it, we have connections that are, are going to each individual plant. I have an emitter on each plant and I can adjust it based on how much water that plant needs, whether it needs a whole lot or needs very little, thus by conserving water and using the amount of water that each plant needs to do its best. Rainwater harvesting can be used in our homes as well as smaller areas where we need less water and in this location we're looking at a hunting cabin for our hunters that only use this during a certain times of the year. With this building here, we have about 1,500 square foot of roof and we're catching water off of this building and running through our downspouts and then through our lines that's running to a central point where we have what's called a poor man's roof washer. This catches the first debris and trash that would come from our roof. And then once this is full, then the water is diverted into our tank. We have here a thousand gallon polyethylene tank that uh, when it is full, then it, water runs out through this overflow. This prevents water from backing up through our lines and up into our gutter and putting excess pressure on them. Connecting from our gutters to our downspouts is sometimes a very difficult situation and it makes it also difficult to convert from our downspout into a round pipe that would carry that water to our collection tank. This location we have an existing a gutter, but we also have a factory made downspout that makes that connection up there at the top very easy. However, converting from our downspout to our collection pipe and sending that water to the tank takes a special uh, piece of material in this location that we have one that converts from uh, a rectangle to the round and to so that it connects into the three inch PVC pipe. This is uh, screwed in uh, to, our, to our gutter downspout and then also into our PVC pipe with screws as well as use silicone there to, to seal it, prevent it from leaking. This thousand gallon tank uh, could be full with just slightly over a one inch of rainfall event. Whenever we're looking at 1500 square foot of roof, we multiply six tenths of a gallon for each one square foot to see how much water falls on that roof. And so if we multiply that times six tenths of a gallon, we come up with 950 gallons for each one inch of rainfall during the rainfall event. This water, once this tank is being used by our hunters, we have a cutoff here that then, once that water is then diverted into this pump and pressure tank, then that puts water under pressure that is allowed then to go to the back of our building where our hunters harvest and clean their animals. Then they also are sent out to the outhouse outside uh, for the use of the facilities out there. But the water is also diverted inside this building under that pump and pressure tank, come to this sink where they can use it to wash their dishes, wash their hands, clean up the building with, and it also has a hot water heater that supplies water that's uh, warm for them to use here at the sink, as well as to use water in the shower so they can take a hot shower. But we need to remember that that water is non-potable water and they have to bring their own source of water to drink and to cook with, and so they can use that for that purposes as this is non-potable water. But otherwise, this provides the water for these hunters with a very limited amount of cost and very easy to set up and provide water during that supplemental times of the year when they need it here. This is my home. Me and my wife are totally self-sufficient on rainwater. We have 3,000 square foot of roof on our house, another 2,000 square foot on a barn to give us a total of 5,000 square foot of roof. That, for each inch of rainfall, gives us 3,000 gallons of water for us to use. Now the type of roof that you use is not as important when we're using water for outside of our homes, whether it's wood or composition or tin, all of those will work for landscaping for wildlife. But if I'm using it for inside my home, the slicker the roof is, 
the less dust and debris is going to be caught on that roof. And so a tin roof is very slick, and so I have less of that trash and dust and debris that would move into my water, into my tanks, so the cleaner water that I have to use. Okay. This is my rain barn, where I capture the water off the roof and use it, plus the water from my house, and it goes into my collection tanks. I have five 3,000-gallon tanks of polyethylene that I use to uh, for collecting water for our house, inside our house, as well as for our landscape. In addition to that, I have a 1,500 gallon tank that I use strictly for gravity flow that supplies water to our landscape and to our raised bed gardens. Altogether, that 16,500 gallons of water keeps me self-sufficient, and that's the only source of water that I have for my in-home use, what I drink, as well as all the landscape that we have. One of the important things to remember as we're collecting rainwater that the cleaner the water is as we go into the tank, the cleaner it is going to be coming out. And so anything we can do to filter and clean that water before it goes in makes that water a lot cleaner. The first flush that we have at our downspouts catch lots of that trash and debris, but we also use here a filter or a screen in a basket farm so that we catch lots of that trash and debris that comes through that floats over that first flush. There are other systems that can use, but this helps keep that water cleaner before it ever goes into that tank. All of my tanks are connected. Uh, from this cutoff valve, I have a main line that runs down the center of my barn, and it can t each tank is tied into it. And from there, it goes on inside to my other shop where I have my pump and pressure tank and all my filters. I can tell how much water is in this tank simply by thumping or trying to feel where it's cool or warm, or I can use this clear tubing as I have here and connect it to the faucet, and I can turn it on and the water level will rise on the same level here as it is on the inside. And then I can mark here on, a, on plastic uh, duct tape or some way and measure exactly how much water I have in the tank and then how much water I'm using on a daily basis. From the line from my tanks, it comes into my shop uh, through this wall, then goes into a regular half horse shallow well pump, and then from there just goes into a regular pressure tank. And from there, I go through a set of filters. I've got a coarse filter, then two fine filters, and then finally it goes through a UV light and then onto my house. One way I can measure also how much water I use, I have a meter here that can register each gallon of water that we use in our house on a daily basis. Whenever you're on rainwater, as we are in our house, which we're totally self-sufficient on rainwater, you really become conservation-minded in all the things that you do. Here in our house, we have a front-load washing machine. We have aerators in all of our faucets, but we do have a conventional dishwasher and we take regular showers and use water in all the ways that everyone else does, but we try to be conservation minded whenever we do those things. We figured that we use 17 gallons of water per day, each one of us in our homes on a daily basis, or we use 34 gallons to two of us daily. That's enough water that we have collected that we can live for a full year with the amount of water that we have in between rainfall events. And the amount of water that we use outside of our yard, we use another 35 gallons of water per day there. And so we figured that we use an annual basis 70 gallons of water. We can live off of less than nine inches of rainfall per year and do exactly what we're doing here in our home and in our landscape on a daily basis.